She does, Mr. Higgins. You've got to believe that. It's the first time in all these months that she's ever missed it. Isn't that true? Yes, except for the night of the launch. Yes. Where are you going? I want to try to find her. Rick, do you want me to go with you? Scotty, you stay here with Leslie, please. Mr. Higgins, Laura really takes that curfew very seriously. You couldn't look. Scotty's already looked everywhere. Well, I'm going to keep looking until I can find her. And what if you don't? In that case, we'll just have to be totally honest. Higgins, look, I know how this makes you feel, Leslie, but we'll have no other choice. Oh, I just pray that you find her. Call you later in case she stops by. So I'm, I'm sure that there has to be some explanation for her being late tonight. Well, let's hope it's a good one, Scotty. that I'm late, but it's been a bad day. Well, we all have those occasionally. Now, Laura, I'm very curious about something. Why did you ring the doorbell just now? Don't you have a key? Yes, I do. I, uh, I just left my purse at the hospital earlier. I see. And why didn't you call your parents tonight and let them know where you were? I would have. It's just that I, I left the hospital in such a rush, I didn't think about telling anybody. Well, why did you leave in such a rush today? It was uh, something that somebody said to me, and it bothered me terribly at the time, but I shouldn't have been so sensitive. Mr. Higgins, are you going to have to report this to Judge Stallman? Well, I don't think being a few minutes late for your curfew is quite serious enough to include in my report. Oh, thank you. But I am very concerned about you being out at night without someone responsible knowing where you are. Now, I must insist that you let your parents know where you're going to be at all times from here on in. I will. I promise. I'll, I'll be sure she does. It's really my fault. I should have insisted that she let me know where she goes when she leaves the hospital. Well, she's back and uh, safe. And that is the most important thing. So I think I'll call it a night. Thank you for being so understanding. There's no need to thank me. But please see that she checks in with you regularly in the future. I will. Laura? mother comes back I just want you to know that I told him the whole story I've never been so glad to see anyone in my whole life I'm sorry I worried you mother oh you have no idea has she where were you I, I left the hospital right after my appointment with dr. Taylor why something happened I had to get out of there you went out in this weather without a coat no I came home and I got my other coat How'd you get in the house if you didn't have your purse? I got the back door key from the garage. Oh. Everything was just all mixed up, and I, I knew I had to take off and walk until I could get things straightened out in my mind. These past few days have been like a nightmare. You walked all over town without any money? No. I took money from my bank when I came home, and then I just walked and, until it got too cold, and then I went to a movie. A movie? Yes, just to get warm. I don't even know what the film was about. Mm -hmm. And then I looked at the clock, and suddenly it was almost 8.30, and I got so scared that I was going to miss my curfew that I got on a bus, and I came straight home. Did you eat anything? No. I'm not hungry. Honey, I understand what you've been going through now. You do? Yes, Scotty told us the whole story. I'm so sorry for both of you. But why didn't you tell us yourself? I couldn't. Why couldn't you? Don't you see? How could... How could I admit to you and Dad that I'd been stupid enough to trust and believe in someone so soon after David? Honey, it's not stupid to trust. Yes, it is. Anyway, I knew that you and Dad didn't want me and Scotty to get too serious about each other. Only because of what you've been going through lately. That's what I mean. And I couldn't face having you tell me how wrong I was or how foolish. Oh, honey, we wouldn't have done that. And you'll never have to. Because 
nobody knows better than I do what a fool I was to believe in someone just because they said that they loved me. Laura, Laura, listen to me, please. There are some things that I have to tell you. You don't have to tell me anything, Scotty. Because I was there today when Bobby introduced you to her brother and was gloating about your getting married next week. Where, where were you? In the lobby, near the main entrance. And then I heard her say that um, her brother was going to be standing up as a witness at your wedding. And that's when I knew I had to get out of there fast, so I ran. Laura, Laura, I'm sorry about all that, but could we please sit down and talk about a few things? There's nothing to talk about. Not now or ever. Bobby's won again, and I'm supposed to stand by like a nice little girl and watch her marry you and smile and congratulate the both of you. Well, I won't. I can't. Scotty, I think maybe it would be better for Laura if you'd go home now. Yeah. I will try to talk to her and uh, calm her down. Oh, I hope that's Rick. Hello? Uh, Leslie, it's Lee. Yes, hi, Lee. Is Scotty still there? Yes, he is. Uh, has he told you what happened about Bobby, I mean? Yes, he told us the whole story. Look, I know Scotty blames himself for everything, but if you and Rick would like to sit down with me sometime, perhaps I could give you more of a, a clear picture of what's going on here. Thank you. Uh, yes, Lee, I I'm not now. I don't mean to sound rude, but uh, Laura just came in and she's terribly upset and as sorry as I feel for Scotty, what I have to be concerned with right now is Laura. Well, I understand that, but there's one thing I want you to keep in mind, Leslie. What is that? Scotty loves Laura with all his heart, and he would give anything if he hadn't hurt her like this. I know that. Unfortunately, I'm afraid that doesn't change anything for Laura. <clears throat> May I speak with Scotty, please? Of course, and I, I will talk to you soon. Uh, leave, Scotty. Oh. I'm going to go up to Laura now. Oh, I'll get myself out. Okay. Uh, uh, Dr. Webber? Yeah. Lee, just a second. Would you tell Laura something that, that she wouldn't let me tell her? What is it? Would you tell her that I love her more than ever? And that the last thing I ever wanted to do was to hurt her? I will. Because I believe it. Yeah, hello, Lee. How are you feeling, Scotty? Pretty rotten. Would you like to come by Gales and talk a little? Yeah, yeah, I would. It might help. Okay, we'll wait for you. Okay, I'll see you in a few minutes. Ever. I mean, on top of everything else, Laura missed her curfew, and Higgins was there waiting for her. Oh, Scotty, well, no. she was there when I was talking to Leslie. I know. She'd just come in a few minutes before that. Well, what, what, did something specific happen that made Laura miss her curfew? Yes. It's my fault again. And what do you mean? Well, I didn't realize it at the time, but Laura overheard me talking to Bobby and her brother about our plans to get married, and then she just ran out of the hospital without her coat. Did you actually set a date with Bobby? No, but I want to get it over as soon as possible because this dragging it out is just going to be harder on Laura. Are you still planning to get married at City Hall? No. No, I've decided that it would be best for everybody if Bobby and I just drove up to Canada. To Canada? Yeah, no, Why? Well, I remember that Jeff and Heather got special permission from some minister up in Toronto to get married without that waiting period, the blood test and everything. So I am going to get Bobby to agree to that. Oh, Scotty. And then after that, I am going to make Laura believe in me again. It's going to be a little difficult while you're married to Bobby. I know that, Lee, but I've got to try. Because my life will make no sense again until Laura will marry me. Whoa, Scotty. Now that's after Bobby has her baby. 
and gives you that divorce she promised you. 